A national day of protest has been held across a number of universities today, highlighting what campaigners say is a questionable relationship between academics and the fossil fuel industry. Talk fracking boss and son of Dame Vivian Westwood, Joe Corr, handed the Fracademics report to the Vice Chancellor of Imperial College this morning. He joins us now to explain more. Good evening. Hello. Now, tell us, this, this report, Fracademics, what, what does it actually talk about? Well, it looks at the relationship between um, academic scientists, uh, the fossil fuel industry and the government, really, um, and studies how they sort of work together um, in order to produce the information that they then rely on to introduce legislation around fracking and to, and to pursue their fracking agenda. We're looking at images from today, which is one of your professors turning up covered in oil. Explain mm. what happened here. Well, that was outside Imperial College this morning because some professors in Imperial College are actually named in the report. Um, and we went up there this morning, um, delivered the report, and uh, took a photo opportunity of sort of a, of a <laughs> student or a professor covered in oil to, to push the point home. Um, but I think what's important to look at is that the government has essentially relied on three or four central um, scientific reports to support their argument for fracking in the UK. And our report, I think, really undermines the foundations of those, um, particularly one, um, the McKay Stone report, which is to do with uh, carbon emissions from fracking, which the government has kind of said, you know, fracking gas is better than coal in terms of its emissions, and they've relied on that and keep, kept repeating that um, consistently over the last uh, year or so. Um, and our report shows that actually the data information that was put into that report in the first place by um, Professor David McKay and Tim Stone may not be correct um, and in fact it could be argued that actually the quantity of carbon emissions that their report says comes out, the, the actual true figure could be four times higher. Now of course those uh, academics aren't here to defend themselves sure. so, so we will we'll leave that but just and on a wider scale is it that you are going to oppose any academic that writes in favour of fracking because you are no, very it's a, it's a very it. It's very difficult to get genuine independent research or genuine independent information. Um, if all of the information that we've had so far and Let's face it, I think pretty much all of it has come from academics and institutions that in one way or another are funded indirectly or directly by the fossil fuel industry. So how can we treat this information in a, in a fair way? It's, it's really difficult and it seems that they concentrate um, the government on a, and, and the various scientific reports seem to concentrate on quite a narrow field of information and ignore a whole body of evidence that's come out of the countries where fracking has been going on for the last 10, 15, 20 years, like the USA, Australia, Canada, they ignore huge, huge bodies of evidence that are very detrimental to the case for fracking. Um, so we're trying to put forward, in our way, uh, another point of view and to, and to give people, you know, more information that is not paid for by the fossil fuel industry. I mean, of course, we get the you know, accusation, well, it's paid for by you and your anti-fracking and all the rest of it. We wanted a, a debate. That's what we, what we started to ask for. And to be honest with you, the fr fossil fuel and fracking industry um, wouldn't come to meet us in a debate. Um, that's what we started off from. And so we've ended up in a position where we have to try to bring forward an alternative argument, particularly in a situation where the government's actually got no democratic mandate to be pushing this through, this fracking agenda. You know, nobody voted for this. The election's coming up, and we feel it's important that people should have an alternative point of view. Okay, Joe Cole, thank you so much for coming in this evening.